All right, how you guys doing today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and today we're going to take a look at finding the exact values for the six trig functions when given a point. Now, a lot of times you'll see a problem that looks like this. The point on the terminal side of an angle theta is negative 3, 2. Find the values of the six trig functions. And what this wants you to do, basically, is just find sine, cos, and tangent, and cosecant, secant, and cotangent of that angle. So those are the six trig functions that we're going to go ahead and set out to find for the point negative 3, 2. Now when we go to do this, the very, very first thing that we're going to do is draw a picture to represent the situation. So, negative 3, 2, what we're going to do is draw a coordinate axis, and negative 3, 2 would be a point somewhere up here in quadrant number 2. Now I'm going to take the origin, I'm going to start from there, and I'm going to go up to my point, and then I'm going to go all the way down to the x-axis and I'm going to make a right triangle because this basically right here theta is going to be this angle that is created by that point negative 3 2. Now negative 3 represents the x-coordinate so I'm going to write negative 3 there and 2 represents the y-coordinate so 2 is going to go there. Now what we've got to do is actually find the missing side which in this case is the hypotenuse or the radius of our circle. To do that we will simply use Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to have 2 squared plus and a negative 3 squared equals, and I'm going to just going to use r because that's my radius squared. Now this is where you have to be careful, just make sure you do your arithmetic correctly. You'll get 4 plus 9 equals r squared. When you add that together you get 13 for r squared, but then when you square root 13, because we're dealing with distance, we're only going to take the positive value for our radius. So what we just found was a radius, and that piece is going to be square root of 13. So now that we know that that is square root of 13, all we're going to do is simply set up our trig ratios. Now sine, remember, is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be 2 over square root 13. Oh, but math teachers, you know, we all freak out. We don't like this square root of 13 on the bottom. you got to rationalize that. So when you do that, you'll get 2 roots of 13 over 13. For cosine, you'll have negative 3 over the square root of 13, because that's adjacent over hypotenuse. And then again, you're going to have to rationalize that. And you'll have negative 3 square root of 13 over 13. And then last but not least, we'll have our tangent, which is simply negative 2 thirds. And the negative doesn't matter if it goes up with a 2 or down with the 3. Now for cosecant, secant, and cotangent, remember those are the reciprocal functions of sine, cos, and tangent. So if I know the sine was 2 over the square root of 13 before we rationalized, that means the cosecant is simply going to be the square root of 13 over 2. The secant function is going to be the square root of 13 over 3, and again, that one is going to be negative. And then last but not least, the cotangent function is going to be negative 3 halves. So that's how you find a point on the, when you're given a point on the terminal side, that's how you find the six trig functions. So there's three things you've got to do. First is draw a picture. Second is solve for the missing side using Pythagorean theorem. The third thing that you want to do is go ahead and set up your trig ratios and that's it. So what I want you to do for this one, go ahead and practice this. I want you to find all six trig values for the point six, negative eight. Draw your picture, find the missing side, and then find the values of the six trig functions. When you think you're done, come on back and let's see how you did. Hit pause and go ahead and try this one on your own. So how did you do with this one? Now the common mistake on this is for people to go ahead and reduce this and you don't actually do that this is one of those situations where reducing is something you do not do you don't simplify why don't you simplify well I'm glad you asked think about it like this if you had a 
picture of yourself and you're like yeah I look really great in this picture and it's a wonderful wallet size picture but this looks so good I want to blow this wallet size picture up which is usually like what maybe three inches by two inches I want to blow this thing up poster size yo because it looks that good well if you blow it up poster size even though the scale factor will be the same it's a totally different size picture so that's why when it comes to the trig functions as you go around when you find the actual sine cosecant cosecant secant or cotangent you don't reduce it because then it would be a different size triangle so in this situation you do not reduce now that's it for this video thank you guys for watching hopefully you now know how to find the six trig functions anytime you're given a point on the terminal side of an angle. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Peace out, yo.